Hi, I'm Kath. My channel is Made by Kath Craft. Thank you very much for joining me for my latest episode of my midweek sewing catch up. So it's really nice to be back on for another midweek catch up episode and I've got lots of things to share in this video. I've got some new fabric to share and I want to talk about my potential plans for it because I've got a few different ideas. And it's really pretty fabric so I'm looking forward to deciding and starting sewing with that. I also wanted to update you on a couple of my projects I've made good progress on so I'm looking forward to sharing those. And then at the end of this video I'm planning on popping on a little tutorial video. Somebody asked for this particular tutorial so I filmed it this week so I'll pop it at the end and hopefully you'll find it useful or interesting to watch too. It's a bit of a mix as ever in this video but I'll start off as usual with what I'm wearing today. And today here in the south of England it's quite chilly. Um, yesterday was surprisingly mild and the sun was shining and it was quite nice and then I think the temperature must have really dipped overnight. Um, when I opened up my curtains this morning it was all misty outside but I didn't realise how cold it was until I stepped out for the school run and I just had popped a gilet over this outfit and I felt a little bit chilly actually. <laughs> so it's nice to be back home in the warm and I've actually poured myself a cup of tea before I sat down to film and I don't usually do that because I generally get so focused on filming that I forget to yeah, drink a cup of tea and I'll just go cold but I'm really going to make an effort to have a little sip through this video to keep nice and cosy so yeah I'll try and do that as well as filming so if I can multitask. But anyway um, because it's cold weather I decided to put on a nice cosy sweatshirt and this sweatshirt I made using one of my favourite sweatshirt patterns. I've got two favourite sweatshirt patterns I'd say. It always used to be one which is the Megan Nielsen Jarrah sweatshirt which I've made in quite a few variations and I always enjoy getting my Jarrah sweatshirts out. But then I think around this time last year this pattern was released that I'm wearing today and I decided to give it a try and I really fell in love with it and now it's kind of vying for the top spot along with the Jarrah. Um, it's hard to decide which one I love the most I guess I don't need to pick a favourite I can love them both. Um, but this pattern I'm wearing today is this one here is the Mile End Sweatshirt Pattern by Closet Core. And it's a really lovely, comfy, easy to wear sweatshirt. But what I love about it is as well as being really comfy and easy to wear, it has some really nice details to it too, which, make, which makes it a lot of fun to sew. And also I really enjoy the details when I'm wearing it too. So I'll talk about the sizing first. It's got a really good size range. Closet Core patterns generally do, particularly the new ones. Um, I've got the paper pattern, which goes from a US 0 up to a US 20. And it's also a PDF version that takes you from a 14 up to a 32, I think it is. So very size inclusive. And it's just a really nice pattern with some lovely details. I'll show you the line drawings. So it's got kind of like an oversized casual sort of fit. And it's got this um, crew neck band, or the two versions it's got the crew neck band. And then has this lovely back yoke detail, which I don't think you find on too many sweatshirt patterns, which is a really nice detail. It's got cuffs and a bottom band, but the other lovely detail is the way that the pieces are cut. So the back piece is kind of cut, so it kind of comes around the front here, and then the front piece is cut on these diagonal lines. So you end up with these really pretty style lines at the front here, which also works really well for colour blocking. Um, a lot of fun you can have colour blocking this one. And another lovely detail is on the sleeves, there are sleeve darts built in, which gives a really interesting shape and feature. So yeah, I really love all the details, even on the basic sweatshirt version, this version A. Then View B has also this extra detail, which is this sort of um, tie at the front that you can kind of pull in, which I think is quite pretty. I haven't actually tried it though. And then View C is a hooded version with a kangaroo pouch and a sort of crossover front. And the only version I've made so far is View A, but I've made three of View A and I really love wearing them all. So yeah, that's the pattern. It is designed to be quite oversized. I was just trying to remind myself of what size I made. And I think I made the size zero, which is designed for a bust of 31 inches. Waist 24 inches, hips 33, and I'm 32, 26, 36, so larger on all counts. When I look at the finished garment measurements, it is really oversized, this pattern. I'll just remind myself of the finished garment measurements, the size zero, which I've got in this little booklet here. So the finished garment measurement on the bust for a size, size zero is 41.8 inches, so loads of room there. So I think I sized down because I didn't want it really, really oversized, just a little bit oversized. And I really like the fit of them, size zero, so I'm glad I went with that one. And the version I'm wearing today I think is my favourite version I've made and this one came about by a bit of a happy coincidence because I made it out of the scraps from my previous two versions. So I've got a version in this sort of sage green colour, just plain sage green and I've got a version in this lilac colour and I was having a look and found I had just enough of the scraps left over to squeeze out a little cropped version that's colour blocked and I had a lot of fun putting this one together. So I've got a green front and then a green yoke and a purple back, then I've got purple sleeves and green ribbing on the sleeves and a purple ribbing on the neckband. 
and I've also done top stitching um, in contrasting colours too so on the green I've got some purple top stitching and then on the purple I can't remember where oh yeah on the yoke on the back here I've gone some, some um just to stitch the yoke down here I've gone some green top stitching so I had a lot of fun putting this one together and I do find what's nice about it as well is because there's lots of nice details like the sleeve darts which you can see here um, and the yoke it does make it quite an interesting sew a bit more sort of meaty than your average sewing um, sweatshirt sewing pattern I guess um, see, I really love this version. As I said, I made it cropped because I only had enough fabric out to squeeze a cropped version out. But I really like the cropped style of it. So I'm quite glad that I didn't have enough fabric to make a longer version because I really do like where it sits. I'll stand up a bit so you can see. So it just kind of sits just about where my jeans start and they're kind of high-waisted jeans. So everything's nice and covered up and kept cosy, but I quite like the cropped look. And the fabric I used um, for this version is a fleece-back sweatshirting fabric by Mind the Maker which I got from Minerva, I will link it down below. It comes in lots of colours. And what I really like about it is you can get matching ribbing for each of the colours. And I really like it when you can get matching ribbing for sweatshirting fabrics. I think it gives a really nice finish to a handmade sweatshirt. So I've got the lilac ribbing here and the green or sage green ribbing here. And this sweatshirting fabric is really nice, thick, cosy fleece back sweatshirting fabric. It's not a lightweight fleece back sweatshirting fabric. It really is lovely and cosy and thick. So I guess it's probably not the best stretchiest. So if you were wanting to use it for a pattern that needed more stretch you probably want to get the ribbing for the stretchy bits like the kind of cuffs and things but it's perfect if you want a really cozy sweatshirt and I love all my three versions in this Mind the Maker fleece back sweatshirting I'm really tempted actually to make another colour block version and pick a couple more colours but I probably don't need another one but I think I'd have fun making it still um anyway I'll put a picture up of um, how it looks on so you can see what I'm wearing it with just a pair of ready to wear jeans nice and casual and comfy for a day of keeping cozy at home so that is what I'm wearing today so I just stopped there for a moment to have a quick sip of tea but now I'll move on to sharing with you what I wanted to talk about in this video and the first thing I wanted to share was the new fabric that arrived with me this week so I'm really happy it arrived and um, I knew it was on the way and it arrived yesterday so I was really happy I could include it in this video because I'm really looking forward to sewing this up and I'm really looking forward to sharing with you my possible ideas for what I want to make it's really pretty fabric so I want to do it justice and this fabric is by Atelier Dupe and it was very kindly gifted to me and it's from their new autumn winter collection which is actually launching this week so that's very exciting they've got a whole range of new viscose fabrics coming out with some really beautiful prints and they've also got two new patterns coming out too which look really really lovely so I'll link their website and their Instagram page down below so you can keep your eyes peeled for when the new collection launches I really like Atelier Dupe fabrics and um, I think they're really nice quality I think they have such pretty patterns and also really vibrant colours as well so it makes them pleasure to wear and also lovely to sew with so I'm really looking forward to sewing up my new fabric um, this is a viscose fabric and I've sewn with their viscose before twice. I've made um, a Frida blouse, which is their Atelier Dupe pattern, in a blue floral fabric of theirs. I'll pop a picture up so you can see what that looked like. I really love that blouse. It's really, really pretty, that print. And I also sewed up um, the Charlie Kaftan by Closet Core Patterns using some Atelier Dupe fabric I was lucky enough to win in an Instagram um, competition. I'll put that um, dress up too so you can see that. And I really enjoy wearing both those garments. And I often get compliments about the fabric when I wear them because it's such pretty fabric. So when they asked me if I'd like to choose some fabric from their new collection, I jumped at the chance. Because um, as I said, I do really think their fabrics are really, really nice. So this is my new viscose fabric by Atelier Dupe that arrived in the post this week. I think it's so pretty. Here it is. So yeah, it's got this lovely um, green base, which kind of is coming out a little bit turquoise or sort of light green on the screen. But it's actually quite a rich, deep emerald green colour. And it's got a really lovely floral pattern on and I love the sort of pretty sort of purpley I don't know what kind of colour of purple you call that quite a sort of light colour purple quite bright purple and I love how that pops against the green I think it's so pretty and there's also a little bit of light blue as well and a bit of white it's such a pretty intricate floral pattern I think it's such lovely fabric it's a really nice quality viscose fabric it's got a bit of weight to it it's got a lovely drape I'll pull it out so you can see yeah really lovely drape to it so yeah, I'm really excited to have it and I think I've got just over 1.5 metres of this and what I'd like to make with it is some sort of woven at top and I think I'd like to make a blouse because I think it would sell into a really nice blouse that I could kind of dress up with a skirt or dress down maybe with a pair of jeans too. I think that colour would work really well 
as a dressier blouse or also a more casual blouse too so I think it'll be quite a useful handy item to have so that is my plan for this fabric and I've got a few different patterns I've been thinking of using to turn this into a blouse so I thought I'd share those patterns the first one is this pattern here which is the blouse pattern by the Avid Seamstress and this is a pattern I made a few times when I was fairly new to sewing but I haven't made for quite a while so it'll be quite nice to revisit it I really like how simple it is um I'll show you the line drawings, they're quite small here, but it's a very basic, simple blouse pattern with no darts, quite loose fitting. And then it's got this mandarin sort of style collar, this band collar, a simple button down front and these cute little elasticated cuff sleeves. So it's quite a simple blouse pattern. It sews up really nicely. And I just think it's because it's quite simple, it will be nice for showcasing a really pretty fabric like this one. So that's my first idea. My second idea is to make another Frida blouse by Telia Dupe, which is the blouse I showed you I made in the blue fabric, which is another really pretty blouse pattern. I know it works really well in the Telia Dupe fabric. This is a Frida blouse here. It's another blouse with a band collar, and I do quite like a band collar more than like a full collar. I find a full collar sometimes a little bit too much around my neck, um, just personal preference. And this one's got a little bit of gathering at the front here with a yoke on top, a button down front. It's got this really pretty um, pleat at the back, which gives really lovely detail and it's also got little pleats on the sleeves too and little bands to finish off the cuffs so it's another kind of blouse pattern you can dress up or dress down it can be quite casual but it has some really pretty details and then my third option for this fabric is another blouse pattern that i've been making recently that i'm really loving which is a pattern from this magazine here which is five mood magazine issue 16 and if you've watched my recent videos you'll know which pattern i'm going to show you because i've sewn this one up fairly recently it is their Amin blouse. I've got it here. This blouse pattern here. So it has a little bit of similarity to the Frida blouse by Telia Dupe because it's got this sort of yoke at the front. But this one's got more of a sort of feature of the yoke because it's quite a deep um, V shape with this gathering. And it's also got a gathering on the back with another yoke there. And this one, rather than a band collar, it's just got a very simple round neck finished with bias binding. And I really like that neckline. Like I said, I'm not a big fan of too much around my neck, so this neckline really suits me well. It's got quite a simple sleeves and um, it's just finished by turning up the edges, so no cuff there. And I guess it's quite loose fit. All these blouses, are, they're not designed to be sort of tight fitting blouses. They're quite loose and billowy, so I think they work really well with a viscose fabric. And because this viscose fabric has a bit of weight, I think it'd be lovely for a wintry blouse. So that is what I'm thinking of sewing. I just need to decide which pattern I'm going to make. I think they all take similar amounts of fabric, so I could choose any of them. So I need to go in and decide. If you have a favourite, then do let me know in the comments down below but I'm really looking forward to sewing this fabric um, I don't have a lot of green in my wardrobe but I do think green's a lovely colour for winter so I think it'll be a lovely one to sew up so I'm gonna get this in the pre-wash as soon as I finish this video and get it on the line because actually the sun's come out while I've been filming so hopefully it'll dry nice and quickly on the line and I can start thinking about what I want to cut and sew out of it so the next thing I wanted to share in this video is an update on how I've been getting on with one of my recent sewing projects and that is a dress I've been sewing using one of my favourite patterns, which has recently had an expansion pack released for it to transform it slightly. And the pattern is the Forsyth dress by French Navy, which is a really lovely woven dress pattern. I think it might be the original pattern French Navy released, or if not the original, definitely one of their older patterns. But it's one I really love and I've made two versions and I wear those versions, both of them a lot. So this is the Forsyth dress pattern, the original version before the add one. And I'll show you the details on the line drawings. It's got a lovely panelled bodice with a round neck and cuffed sleeves. And the panellings are both the front and the back. It's quite nice, these curved lines. And it's got a button down back and a gathered skirt and pockets. And what I quite like is how these panelling lines sort of feed into the pockets, which I think is a really lovely detail. So you can have quite a lot of fun with this pattern. You can kind of colour block it or play around with stripe directions, all sorts of things. And I've made one really summery version and one version that I wear across the seasons and um, I wear it on its own in summer and then I layer it up with like a frayer top and tights and a cosy cardi in winter. So I find it quite a versatile dress and it has a really nice relaxed fit to it. It's not oversized but it's not fitted so I find it a really comfy one to wear. So yeah I've got two versions of the four strife dress and I have been thinking for a while I'd like to make another version and then this month the French Navy released an expansion pack to the four scythe dress to turn it into a more wintry option and I really really love the look of it and I'll show you what the new expansion pack of the four scythe dress pattern looks like here. So it's the same four scythe dress with the panelling and the gathered skirt and the pockets but the button placket has been moved from the back to the front on the expansion pack and also these lovely sleeves have been added for a more wintry look. 
So these sleeves are bishop sleeves with a lovely shape to them that's gathered at the cuff. And the pattern piece is quite an interesting shape. It's kind of comes up at this side to give it this sort of lovely sort of high-low detail, which I think is really nice too. So when this um, pattern was released, I knew straight away I wanted to buy the expansion pack and get it sewn up. And then before I actually bought it, um, I was very lucky to receive an email from Sarah at French Navy gifting me this expansion pack. She said there was no obligation to make it up and share it or anything like that, but I knew I definitely was going to make it up and share it because I really, really love the look of it. So yeah, that's the expansion pack. I think there's a couple of line drawings here so you can see how it looks very like the original but with these new sleeves and the button placket moved. And I've had a lot of fun sewing this up. I had the fabric in my stash already, um, which I hadn't got a firm plan for, so I thought it would be perfect to use for this dress, and I had enough of it, luckily. And it's this lovely um, Vichy cotton fabric from Simply Fabrics. It's got this really cute little check on it. It's yarn dyed, so it's kind of the same on both sides. And it's really lovely to sew with this lovely stable cotton. And so I've finished my four size dress with the expansion pack sleeves. Um, I really, really enjoyed sewing it. So any chance I had for a moment to sit down and sew, I've been taking it over the last few days and I've really, really enjoyed how it's sewn up. Um, as you can see, I've used this fabric for all of the dress except the bias binding. There is a pattern piece included so you can make bias binding out of the fabric. But I thought this fabric had a little bit of bulk to it. Um, so I thought once I added the bias binding, it might get a bit bulky around the neck. So I decided to go for a cotton lawn um, that I had just a scrap of in my stash that I thought would go quite nice in this blue colour for this bias binding. I mean, everything else is the fabric itself and it just came together really nicely. It's got the buttons down the front and I went for these navy buttons to add a little bit of a sort of feature and I went for sort of navy thread on the buttonhole too. And I also had a bit of fun um, doing some top stitching along the panels. You can see here, if I hold it up, and hopefully you can see their line here. I've gone for the navy top stitching and I've done that on the back too. So you can see the navy top stitching line just because I thought because I'm going for the one fabric and it's got this kind of busy although it's very small print I wanted that panelling still to be a visible detail so I thought adding the navy thread would work really well for that so this is my version it's got this lovely lovely cuffs which I think are really really pretty and um, the pan pattern does say um, it's recommended to go for a drapey fabric I guess because of the sleeves and the drape on the sleeves and this fabric isn't super drapey but I actually really like how it's turned out um, and it's got the pockets here and again I top stitched on the pocket so you can see the detail there the gathering at the front and the back and yeah I'm really really happy with how it turned out it was such a fun sew and I really really love this dress so I'm going to get some pictures done and I'm going to talk in more detail all about this make on Saturday I'm planning to release a makes video to catch up on my recent makes because I know I've talked about them a little bit in these catch-ups in bits and bobs but I thought I'd do a proper video where I go through all my recent makes and share all the details so I will be sharing detail, more details on the sizing and adjustment and all those things, as well as photographs in that video. But I wanted to share a sneak peek in this video here because I really love how it's turned out. So yeah, that's my um, four size dress using the expansion pack. Um, tune in on Saturday for more details on that one. So the next thing I wanted to share is another make that I finished this week. And this one is a knitted make. And it's one I've been working on for quite a while. It's been quite a long term project that I've really enjoyed. So although I was really happy to finish it on one hand, in another way I was a little bit disappointed it was over because I've enjoyed it so much. And I do love the knitting process itself. I find it really mindful. And this particular knit was one I really enjoyed because of the stitches. I really enjoyed the stitches on this one. So I am very happy it's finished on one hand, but I'm sad a little bit too. But one good thing is, um, now it's finished, I'm pretty happy with the sizing on it. Um, I often find with sewing projects, when you finish them, if they don't fit quite right, you can tweak them at that stage to kind of obtain a better fit. But with knitting projects, it's not so easy at that point. So I'm always really glad when they do come together and fit okay. And I don't have to start unpicking <laughs> and redoing things. So that was quite good. Um, and yeah, just I just really enjoyed finishing it actually and taking time over seaming it. And I'm really glad it's come together and yeah, come together nicely. And the project was a sweater I was knitting using a We Are Knitters knitting kit. And the pattern I used was this one here, the pink Cosmos sweater. And it's knitted up in their cotton yarn, which is really nice to knit with on five millimetre needles. So quite a nice needle size, not too fiddly, but not so big that it knits up really, really quickly. So I really enjoyed knitting it up. The instructions are really good. Um, I love the lace work on it because it's a really lacy jumper. So it's quite a, like a relaxed um, dropped shoulder sweatshirt and the main feature is a lovely lacy stitch. So I'll show you my sweater and you can see how it's all come together with a lacy stitch. And I'm really pleased how it's turned out. It's quite hard to see with the black yarn, I think, but hopefully you can see the stitching there. So I really enjoyed seeing this lace, lace stitch come together. 
I pretty much knitted this up per the pattern. The only changes I made were, firstly I sized up one size, my measurements would put me as a small, but I made the medium because I knitted a tension gauge beforehand and I generally find with We Are Knitters kits that I knit a bit more tightly than their tension gauges. So I decided to size up one size, sort of to counterbalance that, so I could knit with using my tension and hopefully still get the right size. And it's come out really nicely actually, I'm really happy with the size medium in my knitting tension. And then the only changes I made were um, for the neck band, which you can see here, and the bottom band. Um, I used a rib stitch um, on those, whereas the pattern specifies to use a garter stitch. And I decided to go for rib stitch because I quite like the classic rib stitch look on a sweater. And also the sleeve cuffs are specified to be knitted in rib stitch anyway, so I thought it would match them nicely. So I went for rib stitch all round. So I really like how that's turned out. Um, other than that, I didn't have to make any other changes. I didn't even have to lengthen the sleeves, which I often do on knitting and sewing patterns. So that was great. And it just came together really nicely. And I took my time seaming it. It was quite satisfying in a way, because when I was seaming, you kind of have to make sure it all matches up, you know, so where the kind of pattern meets. And it all ends up meeting quite nicely. Hopefully you can see the kind of the middle pieces across from each other there and things. So I took a bit of time, took it slowly, and I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. So I've got pictures of this one, so I'll pop a picture up of me wearing it. It's really lovely and comfy to wear. The cotton yarn is really lovely and soft, um, and I think I'll be able to wear it through winter, although it's not the thickest, sort of fluffiest wool. If I layer it up nicely, I think it'll be nice and warm, so I can hopefully start enjoying it now. And yeah, it just feels really me when I put this one on. I'm not usually one for really lacy things, but I really like it, actually. Um, I like how it's kind of a classic sweatshirt look with a pretty stitch to it, so... Yeah, I really enjoyed knitting it. I almost want to knit another one now, just for the joy of knitting it, because I love the stitching on this one. But yeah, I'll have to think about what my next knitting project will be. I haven't got a definite one on the horizon at the moment, other than a few little things that I've been dabbling in, but not something for me right now. So I need to have a think on that front. But yeah, I'm really pleased with it. But that was the Pink Cosmos sweater by We Are Knitters. Um, yeah, if you want a bit of a challenge, I'd really recommend it. It was a lot of fun to knit it. So the final thing that I've got to share in this video is the tutorial that I filmed this week. And like I mentioned, it was a tutorial that was requested by somebody in the comments of one of my previous videos. In that video, I was talking about a pair of um, True Bias Hudson pants I'd made. And I was talking about how I like to finish the waistband. Instead of with um, buttonholes that like the pattern recommends um, to thread the cord through, I like to finish the waistband by attaching on eyelets using my Prim Vario pliers because I think it gives a really nice finish. Quite like a ready-to-wear finish to a pair of joggers. And somebody asked if I could do a video showing how I use my Prim Vario pliers to attach those eyelets. So I put that video together this week, so I'm going to insert it now. Hopefully you'll find it useful um, if you haven't done it before. Um, and then I'll join you afterwards to finish off this video and say goodbye. So I'll pop the tutorial in now and I'll see you again in a moment. Hi there, I'm Kath and this is a quick tutorial video to show you how to insert eyelets onto your handmade clothing to give a really lovely professional finish. And I'll be showing you how to insert those eyelets using these, the Prim Vario pliers, which work really well for inserting eyelets and I think they're a lot of fun to use too. So I think eyelets give a really great finish to any garment where you want to add a cord or a drawstring, for example, jogging bottoms, hoodies, a light jacket, anything like that. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples of garments I've made where I haven't used eyelets and where I have, so you can see the difference in the finish. So I've got two pairs of jogging bottoms and the first pair I made before I had my Prim Vario pliers and I didn't know how to insert eyelets. So here they are. And as you can see, I've threaded the cord through and I've made a hole using a buttonhole on my sewing machine, which works perfectly well and gives an okay finish. But I don't think the finish is as good as when you use eyelets. So I'll show you my more recent pair and where I have used eyelets on the waistband. And here they are. And I just think it gives a great finish and I think it'll make them more hard wearing going forward too. So I'm going to show you in this video how I go about adding the eyelets in using the Prim Vario pliers. It's really quite straightforward and like I said, it can be a lot of fun to use them too. So these are my Prim Vario pliers and I think they're a really handy tool if you're sewing your own handmade wardrobe. As well as using them to insert eyelets, I've also used them to attach on jeans buttons and rivets too. And I've used them to attach on poppers for things like baby clothes as well. So I've got a lot of use out of my Prim Vario pliers and I'll link them down below in case you fancy getting yourself a pair. And the other thing you need to attach eyelets as well as the actual Vario pliers is the eyelets themselves. And the ones I use are Prim brand ones and they're their five millimeter eyelets. Um, I've got the package here and I'll link it again down below. 
And when you get this packet, you get the actual eyelets themselves and you also get the two attachments you need to put on your Prim Vario pliers so you can insert the eyelets. So I'm going to turn the camera out and show you in detail what I do. So here are my Prim Vario pliers and if I want to use them to install eyelets, first of all I need to insert two attachments onto them here and here. And those attachments come when you buy this pack of eyelets here. They come as part of the pack and they look like this. So they each have this little stalk on the bottom that you use to insert into the pliers and then they each have a different top to use for each side of the eyelet itself. There's one that's got a little raised top and one that's got a little hole in it. And they fit onto the pliers really easily. You just pop them in the hole here and then sort of push them in. There's one. There's the other. So there they are, ready to go. And then with the pack, you also get the eyelets themselves. So there are two pieces to the eyelet. This is the front with a little raised part on it. You can see how it looks here. And this is the back that's flatter. So they each pop onto one part of the pliers and they can be squeezed on. And I'll show you how to do that. So I've got a little piece of fabric here that I'm going to use as my tester fabric. And what I usually do with my fabric is I get the pattern piece um, with the actual indication on it where you have to put the buttonhole or eyelet. And I make a mark on the fabric using a little chalk pen so I know where I'm going to be putting the eyelet. So I'll pop a little mark on like this so I know exactly where the eyelet's going to go. And the next step is to apply some interfacing onto the back of the fabric. And I usually use woven interfacing because it's not an area that's going to stretch much and it's only a small piece. So even if I'm working with stretchy fabric, I don't think stretch interfacing is needed. Just something to kind of give a bit more structure and a bit more sort of durability to the hole where the eyelet's going to go. So I'm going to pop some interfacing on here and then I'll show you the next steps. So I put the interfacing on now here so it's nice and sturdy, vegetate the eyelet. And I've still got my little white dot here marked on for where I want the eyelet to go. And the next step is to make a hole in the fabric to ready for the eyelet. And to make the hole, I usually use a tailor's awl. So this is my awl here, it's nice and sharp, perfect for making an initial hole in the fabric. So using my white spotter guide, I pop the tailor's awl through there and create a little hole in the fabric. And then that's not quite big enough usually for the middle of the eyelet. So what I usually do then is get my little tiny scissors and snip a little bit extra. So you don't want to snip too much, but just a little bit extra to create a little bit more space for the eyelet to go through. So you've got a nice hole there. And then you can then try seeing whether you can push the eyelet through. So I usually use the front section. It's got this raised piece. Pop it on and see if I can push it through the fabric um, here. So I've snipped just enough there so you can see the eyelet's going all the way through, ready to be popped on. So once I know that's okay, I kind of leave that in because that's where I want it to be. There's the front there. And I get my tool ready. So on this tool, what I want is I want the... This, this raised part here to sit in this part here of the tool with the hole in. So that one goes there. And then I lay the other piece, the back piece, over the top. And it's got a slight raised part and that's the one that goes towards the actual fabric. Like that. So you can see the one that's got the little ridge around the edge goes on the upside there. I press down like this and give it a big squeeze. You should feel it sort of fall in place and there it is pressed onto the fabric. So it's really easy, just a nice squeeze until you can really feel it sort of fused together. And now it's ready for, to insert a cord. <laughs> so there's the eyelet installed. I just need to do one more if I'm making a pair of jogging bottoms. So I've got my two to thread the cord through. So just to be really clear on which part of the eyelet goes with which part of the prim vario pliers, I thought I'd show you once more. So on the pliers, you have one piece with a hole in and one piece of the raised section. And the piece with the hole in is where you put the front section of the eyelet, which is this one here that has a higher top. So that just fits nicely in the pliers here, as you can see there. And then this section of the pliers, which has the raised bit, is where the back of the eyelet goes. So the back of the eyelet, it's got on one side a raised middle and then on one side a raised edge. Where well, you need to put it on the pliers with the raised middle facing up. So this way up, if you can see that, it goes onto there. And once they're both in place, you can squeeze it together, ready to insert onto the clothing. And then I thought I'd mention one last thing, because a couple of people have asked me how I go about threading a cord through these tiny eyelets. Well, I have some tiny safety pins, which I'll link down below. And they're here, they're really small. And I use one of these to thread my cord through. So I just pop the cord, attach the safety pin, pop it through the hole, and then feed it around 
the waistband or whatever I'm making. So that is how I use my Pim Vario pliers to attach eyelets to handmade clothing. I think it's quite a simple and quick method and I think it gives a really lovely professional looking finish too. So I hope it might have inspired you to have a go as well if you haven't already. So that was my tutorial video that I filmed this week. I hope you found it clear and helpful if it's something you've been thinking about giving a try. I think eyelets give a really lovely finish to a handmade garment. And to be honest, I just really enjoy getting my pin vario pliers out. Any opportunity to use them, I'm there. <laughs> and I think I'll release that video, that tutorial, as a separate video on YouTube too, just to make sure it's widely available in case anyone else wants to watch it. So that's the last thing I have to share in this video. So thank you very much for watching. As ever, please do give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. And I'll be back on Saturday with my makes video, sharing all my makes from over the last month or so. I've kind of lost track of what I've made, so I'm looking forward to getting all my garments together and talking all about all the details on them. So I'd love it if you'd join me for Saturday's video too. But in the meantime, I hope you have a lovely week and yes, yeah, see you again soon. Bye.